Hey everyone, my name is Lance and this is Amped About Aimpad. There's been a lot of exciting things happened this past month and I wanted to provide you an update on what's been going on. Uh, the first thing is that we actually had a review of our keyboard, uh, the prototype version of our Aimpad R5 keyboard, uh, and that was posted just this past week by techreport.com. Uh, they did a fairly substantial in-depth review. They had it for a few weeks or so and ran it through its paces to get an idea of is this something viable, is this something real, um, and I think it was uh, a very, very positive review. I highly recommend checking it out. I'll provide a link in the comments, but again, that's on techreport.com. Uh, the second thing that we have been working on is a survey. So what we'd like to do is before we try and guess what people want in a product from Aimpad, we want to actually ask them what it is that you want. So what we have done is made a survey on our aimpad.com website, and I'll also add the link in the comments for where that's at. Um, for a way to kind of motivate people to participate in that survey, we have uh, four Steam gift cards valued at $50 each that we are going to randomly draw from the people that fill out that survey and uh, invite them to give us their thoughts, their impressions, their questions, and what their preferences are for an aimpad keyboard. And, and that will help guide our design principles of what we're going to, to eventually re release. Um, so if you could fill that out, that would be greatly appreciated. If you could share it with anybody that you know, um, just to get as much feedback as we can, because the more information we have, the better we have a, a better idea of what we have of what we need to do. That would be fantastic. Uh, another thing I'd like to do is show you some of the design changes or some of the thought processes that we've gone through in the firmware design. Um, and I'll highlight a couple of significant changes that we've made since the last video. And then the last thing I'll be doing is uh, showing you a demonstration of it being used in Star Citizen. So we'll go ahead and start with that. So we've been getting a lot of feedback from our beta testers and I wanted to kind of give some insight on decisions that we've made in our design process based off of that feedback that we've been getting. Uh, so one of those things is the way that we were conveying whether or not a feature was enabled or dis disabled on the keyboard. We had several ideas of like, uh, well maybe we'll have a nice little pattern that goes blue 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 then when it turns on and it goes blue 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 when it turns off or different colors depending on what mode you're in and things like that. But basically the feedback was it's too confusing, We're not. it doesn't help convey clearly what's going on. So what we decided to do was a very clear indication when a feature is enabled and when it's disabled. So for example, if I push this FN key and then the home key, this the lights will gradually increase in brightness from no lighting to green and it'll just gradually increasing in intensity until it, it's lit fully and that lets you know that the keyboard has activated that function. If you press the same thing FN and home again the lights will actually decrease in red a lot faster so there's a stark contrast between the activation of a slow gradual increase with green and a rapid decrease using the red so again green slow red fast. Um, and we use that universally across any feature that we enable or disable on the keyboard so it's very clear because you know you're pushing FN and home, you're activating that feature. In this example, the home key controls whether or not the keyboard keys are activated at the bottom of the key press or not. Um, and again, if you disable it like that. So again, that, that helps convey clearly what's going on in the keyboard. And another feature that we uh, have is variable settings. So if you're setting the activation point of the key switch or maybe the anti-dead zone or the sensitivity settings or things like that, uh, universally we made it so that it always lights up using the, a white colored LED and it will gradually increase or decrease in brightness. So for example, if I push this page down, the uh, brightness is Go, gr gradually decreases. If I increase it, it just gradually gets brighter and brighter and brighter. So you might have noticed as I passed through these settings, it turned green for a second. So the reason why it does that is green indicates the default settings or the setting that we recommend for, for most cases and, and uh, generally in all of our testing across different games, this setting tended to be the best. It may not be perfect, you may need to tweak it a little bit, but generally if you leave it at the green setting, it's going to be pretty good. Um, the other options that we make sure that is clearly conveyed is when we go to the very bottom of the setting, it turns red, indicating that's the very bottom. If you keep on pressing this, nothing else is going to happen because you're at the very, very bottom, it's red. And the same thing if you were to go all the way up to the, to the very top. So clearly any setting that has a variable setting, all white LEDs, 
red at both the top and the bottom setting and green at the default. So we tried to make that universally across any variable settings across the keyboard and I think that helps convey clearly what's going, kind of going on in the keyboard. Uh, we also made a pretty significant paradigm shift. So one of the, the feedbacks that we were getting was that um, previously you would have to switch this button to enable or disable the uh, analog functions. So by default you would be in this reddish mode letting you know it's just a normal keyboard but to access any of the analog functions you would have to push this aimpad key and that would activate the ability to go to the other options which was F1, F2, F3, F4, etc. The problem was that uh, some of our beta testers were having was that while they're in keyboard mode let's say they wanted to activate the mouse mode. So in order for them to activate the mouse mode the impulse was, well, I'm going to push FN and F4 to activate the mouse mode, but it wasn't happening. It would, it would actually force you to do it. So we, we made it possible that you can activate any of the functions F1 through F6 now to, irregardless of where you're at in the keyboard, you can quickly switch to any function that you want. Now, to help facilitate that process um, and make it a little more clear of what was uh, going on, um, we change the function of this aimpad key. It no longer activates or deactivates the aimpad functions. It actually acts as a quick toggle. So it allows you to switch between any two modes that you want. So there's two layers of the keyboard. Layer one, you can set to be any of the six modes. And if you push the button, it activates layer two. It has to be on something different <laughs> in order for it to work. But so this is on layer two. If I push it, it's layer one. So now, if, say, for example, I want layer one to be uh, the keyboard mode, I would do FN and F6. So now it's just a normal keyboard mode. I can switch this button again. Now, what do I want to be layer two? Uh, I want that to be the mouse button, so the mouse function. So now I can just switch this back and forth. So say I'm typing along, typing my message, and uh, I want to use the, the mouse button or activate the mouse button. I, rather than having to do FN and F4, I can quickly tap it with my pinky button and, and then it can uh, move the mouse however I want and then go back to typing. Um, so let's say you're in a game that requires a lot of running around on foot and jumping in and out of vehicles. So using the keyboard mode, that's probably not the best use. I want F1 for the dry, or for running around on foot because uh, the left analog stick would be controlled here. But when I jump in a vehicle, I would want this to be for my layer two, the driving mode. So now I can switch back and forth between the foot controls and the driving controls rapidly using the aimpad key. But you can, based off of your use case scenario, you can set that uh, layer one and layer two to be whatever you want and rapidly switch back and forth using this uh, aimpad key since it's right handy there. Uh, seemed to be a, a good logical choice. So I'd be interested to see what your thoughts were on uh, using that as a quick toggle rather than how we were treating it before. Um, there's a lot of tweaks and changes that we've made to the keyboard. We actually have a manual that we've posted online on our website at aimpad.com and you can download that if you're interested under our downloads page just to kind of get an idea of how much depth there is to the keyboard. There's quite a bit. Um, but I think that gives you an idea of kind of where we're headed design-wise from the firmware and I think it's shaping up to be very, very good. The last thing I'd like to do is show you a demonstration of this keyboard being used in Star Citizen. So we'll go ahead and go to that next. All right, so here we have Star Citizen. Now, the first thing I wanted to do was kind of highlight how I've mapped the key bindings to the specific keys on the keyboard to help kind of convey what's going on as well as to help me remember how I mapped this because it's uh, working out pretty well. Uh, so the first thing that I've changed is I've made the roll left to the trigger left and the roll right to the trigger right. And that corresponds to the Q and the E uh, on the keyboard. And uh, that will become self-evident here in a second. Um, the other ones that I've mapped is strafe up and down, which is mapped to thumb right Y, which on this keyboard is R and F. And the strafe left and right is mapped to thumb LX, which is going to be the A key and the D key. And then lastly, the strafe forward and back is the thumb left Y axis. So that's mapped to W and S. So let's take a look and see how that actually conveys in the game. So starting with uh, the, the strafe forward and back, that's W and S, you'll notice the speed is going to be uh, shown in this area here. Um, based off of how far down I push the key is how fast that acceleration is going to happen. So if I ease it off all the way again, it's going to go back to zero. And I just barely ease it in, it's going to go four and five and six and seven and ten. And it'll just keep easing it faster and faster 
and it directly corresponds to how much I'm pushing down the key. So you'll see it, it will just gradually increase more and more and more as I push it down and how incredibly sensitive it is. Um, I'm just going to ease it a little bit more and more since you get the idea. But basically, if I push it down all the way, I'm now at 210, which is the max speed for this ship. Um, as far as other things, uh, Q and E is a roll left and right, as strafe left is A, strafe right is D, and vertical is R and F to go up and down. So it's hard to kind of convey that when I'm out here in space, so I'm going to find a nice asteroid to give us a contrast of what's going on for the movement here. So if I get nice and close to this uh, asteroid, if I push A, or I'm sorry, D first, if I just push it down just a small amount, you'll see it will uh, move myself nice and slow. And if I push it a little bit more, it's going to go a little bit faster and a little bit faster and faster all the way. Same thing with the A key, just in the opposite direction. Uh, so if I go back this way, you'll see it has full control there. Same thing on E for the rotation to the right and Q back to the left and vertical R. I'll go a little bit and a little bit more, a little bit more. So full strafing ability up and down with full analog control. So the whole point of this layout is it allows me to have four degrees of freedom of movement with my left hand, forward, back, left and right, roll, and vertical strafe up and down. And then with my right hand, I can control the yaw and the pitch. So I have full six degrees of freedom of movement completely in analog control and I have full control over my ship in Star Citizen so I can ease myself around this uh, asteroid if I want and spin myself around in any direction uh, let's find something interesting to navigate through over there maybe so let's see if I can ease myself into this area here and I'll try and pass myself in between this little uh, space without knocking into anything. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, that's pretty good. I think I will have no problem navigating through that at all. So you can see full control and allows me to have the precision aiming with my mouse buttons left and right uh, all while still having the full control over the ship in any capacity that I want. So, I think uh, Star Citizen gets my gold star of approval for a fantastic game to, to play using an aimpad analog keyboard. Alright, so hopefully you enjoyed a little bit of the insight into our developmental process, a little bit of playback of Star Citizen, and an update of where we are in our developmental process. So again, the biggest thing I'd like to convey is that survey. We need survey feedback. As many people as you can pass it on to along, that would be the most helpful to us so we know that we're making something that people actually want. Uh, the, the survey will actually be running for about two weeks from the time that I post this video, and then at the conclusion of those two weeks, I'll do a, a random drawing for those four Steam gift cards for anyone that's uh, participated in that survey, whether the information is useful or not. I think it will be a little bit of an entertaining vid video. I have some interesting things in mind, but it will be completely random on who I draw that from. So go ahead and uh, participate in that survey, pass it along to as many people as you can. If you uh, like this video and want to see more of it, please go ahead and subscribe. We'd love to have you. Otherwise, until next time, thanks for watching.